Hello, my name is Beverly Allen. I am a Tacoma-based family law attorney. I've been practicing for 13 years. This video is made in cooperation with the Pierce County Law Library, part of their Vibrant Communities video series, and will explore minor guardianship in Pierce County. Now, a couple of caveats. First, although I have taken um, several minor guardianship cases uh, to trial, and can, it, can speak from my experience as a trial attorney, it is still a relatively new statute, one that went into effect in 2021. Uh, changes to the statute in terms of how judges are, are interpreting it and what clerk's offices are requiring have, I think, as we speak today in 2024 in January, have settled into um, a good routine, but initially there was a lot of confusion around things like emergency orders, residential schedules. Um, I believe that the law has now been through um, enough testing that we are fairly certain about how it works. And yet I would encourage you to stay updated and in particular to look at the statute and check with the Pierce County Law Library. The second caveat is that none of my uh, statements herein are the official position of the Pierce County Law Library. They are my opinion um, and my understanding primarily based on my trial experience with minor guardianships. So a little bit about how minor guardianships started just for context. There used to be a, a third party custody petition that you could file if you could show that the child um, was um, harmed or at risk of harm and um, you were not a parent. And in 2021, we phased that out and we now require people to file a minor guardianship petition. Um, another interesting thing that happened is minors can now file the petitions themselves. Um, when a minor does that, I do think it has some weight with the court, provided the minor is articulating their position uh, clearly enough and has a good basis for their request. Uh, but a child over 12 can be a petitioner. Now, as a practitioner, I would recommend that the child actually sign on uh, as a co-petitioner to a petition that's brought um, by someone else, um, but I do think that um, it, it matters who the petitioner is for an important reason and one that I've used um, to my client's benefit in court, which is a civil rule um, that states that after the petitioner has rested their case, if they haven't met their legal requirement of proof under the statute, the court can deny the relief and dismiss the case. And that is civil rule 41. It's a mid-trial motion. And in a case where I had a very competent attorney who was representing the child, but the child was not a co-petitioner, I was able to get that motion granted. I think had the child been a co-petitioner, it would have been much harder um, with the caliber of attorney that was representing uh, the child. I think it was a very high caliber attorney representing the child. I, which brings me to another point about minor guardianships. The petitioner is not eligible for an attorney, but the child is, and the biological parents are. And so I think that's important to note. I think there was a reason it, why it was done that way because this is all in the context of parents have a constitutionally protected right to parent their child. The US Supreme Court has said that, Washington state courts have said that. So this process interferes with the normal right to parent the child, which is why there are some protections and some high burdens that are put on this process. So initially there was some confusion about how to proceed when the parent had an emergency but um, wanted a long-term guardianship put in place. And originally the practice among attorneys 
was that we would file a petition for a minor guardianship and we would also file an emergency minor guardianship because originally it was understood that only the emergency minor guardianship could come with a residential schedule and could be um, could be implemented uh, by court order. Now, the new guidance asks litigants to look at how long they want the orders for. And the new guidance is that emergency ex parte orders can in fact be put in place even if it's a standard petition for minor guardianship without an emergency. You do have to articulate why there's an emergency. You do have to follow the normal um, court processes. You'll have to give notice. Uh, but if your intention is to have a minor guardianship lasting beyond 60 days, then um, an emergency minor guardianship isn't actually a petition that the, uh, it's, and this is my understanding, that Pierce County, um, specifically the clerk's office, wants you to file. That may change, and this is only my understanding of that, but it does make sense to me. Under the emergency minor guardianship uh, statute, which is RCW 11.130.225, the proposed guardian or the petitioner needs to show that there's an emergency um, and that the appointment of the proposed guardian will prevent substantial harm to the minor's health, safety, or welfare, and that no other person appears to have the authority, ability, and willingness to act to prevent substantial harm to the minor's safety or welfare. Again, an emergency order can only be in place for 60 days. Under the old system, it was usually extended out um, or you would have uh, hopefully a trial uh, before it expired on this, the standard petition for guardianship. The standard petition uh, for guardianship is also found in RCW 11.130. And under the standard petition for guardianship, um, that's under subsection 190. And what it does is it allows any person to bring a petition um, under certain circumstances. And specifically those circumstances are that there is no parent who is willing or able to care for the child, or there is a consent uh, to the guardianship. And oftentimes these guardianships are brought because there is a death of a parent um, or, and, and the other parent is either uh, unsuitable because they're, uh, they're housing unstable so that there's nowhere to provide a place for the child or they may be dealing with addiction issues in a facility that doesn't allow children um, or they may simply be unwilling to parent that child. They may be in a different state and have no interest in exercising residential time. And those are unfortunate situations. The, the purpose of the minor guardianship petition is to allow for someone to have what's called letters of guardianship that um, can do a variety of things. And so the main purpose of the letters for guardianship would be to deal with things like school enrollment um, or medical decisions, but also just to state that legally the guardian's home is where the child belongs. And there are ways short of a minor guardianship petition that a parent could rely on a relative for help. That would be a limited power of attorney. And so I don't think it's strictly necessary to file a petition for guardianship if you have a situation where a parent is only going to be unavailable or unable to help for a certain period of time and they have a good relationship with the proposed guardian. Um, in that case, I would actually recommend that they consider using things like powers of attorney and consent letters to make sure that that guardian can enroll the child. Um, if it's a power of attorney, though, the guardian is not going to um, be able to ask for child support, which is a right that they can have and they can pursue under the petition for minor guardianship. So that's something to note is that it wouldn't include the ability to receive child support if you're doing it very informally, such as with consent letters or um, limited powers of attorney. So there are many requirements uh, for minor guardianships, and one of them is a training requirement. 
So professional guardianship agencies uh, exist and are exempt from these requirements, but most of the time what I see is a relative who's not a professional who is seeking to be a guardian. And there is a, a training that is offered. It's an online training. At the end of it, you can get a certificate that you've completed that training. The Pierce County Law Library has packets uh, for both emergency minor guardianship and the standard minor guardianship. And that will also have information about the training. The training is very important. Other important requirements are um, notice. So there are different forms for notifying the um, both the biological parents, if, if any are living, uh, as well as um, the um, certain categories of people. So that would be the grandparents need to receive notification and any adult siblings um, of the child would also need to receive notification as well as anyone who has raised the child within, um, a, within a certain period of applying for the minor guardianship, I believe it's 90 days. Um, so those notification is going to be very important. Personal service is going to be very important as well. Ideally, the child would be a co-petitioner to the minor guardianship because that would make it much easier. And the child has to be over, over the age of 12 to be either a petitioner or a co-petitioner. Um, for the minor, the proposed guardian, again, I would really recommend um, that you make, that you seek an appointment of attorney for the child and that you make contact with that child's attorney because the child's attorney can actually be a big advocate in helping um, to complete that petition for minor guardianship process if that is in fact what their client wants. And if the child is um, does not want that proposed guardian to be a guardian, I, I think the proposed guardian should rethink um, that and try to find someone who the child would be comfortable with. Um, in terms of the standard, the burden of proof at trial, what they're looking for in a contested guardianship case is that there's no parent who is willing or able to perform parenting functions. Parenting functions are defined by a separate RCW and have to do with things like taking the child to school, um, taking care of the child's medical needs, their nutritional needs, uh, and um, helping them form social connections. Uh, those are all parts of what we consider parenting. And how much you can do really varies on the age of a child. So a very young child, baby, for example, is not going to um, be in school, is um, going to have more limited uh, social interactions. But um, it doesn't matter that both parents can't perform. You, you just, you, or, sorry, it doesn't matter that one parent could perform parenting functions. Both parents need to be unwilling or unable to perform those functions. So go to the law library and get the packet, look through it. If you need assistance pursuing minor guardianship, contact Tacoma Pro Bono. You may be eligible also for court appointment depending on your income level. So get screened to see if you qualify. Um, and that would be if you're a parent. Again, the proposed guardian will not be eligible for the free appointment of an attorney under most circumstances. The 